welcome uh, kanu to the in conversation session today uh, we know that you know he is busy with uh, jury duties uh, thank you for you know finding time to join us kanu bell no i'm not being, trying to give you an introduction to the director here i happened to watch titli around uh, 2015 i guess in a theater in tivandrum uh, it came to theater after it was screened in uh, can festival now his latest film agra is uh, screened at uh, just finished screening at can festival again so it's almost 8 years after the after your first feature film was uh, has reached our people uh, so why it took so much time to do a second film was it uh, is it because the second film the theme of the film the content needed uh, that much a process of evolving or that you know you faced issues of funding or combined to that okay i'm, I'm just curious to yeah <clears throat> first of all thank you for having me um yeah i mean as far as agra was concerned i think it's a mix of everything it was always going to be a difficult film i knew that <clears throat> from really early on uh when i started toying with the idea of making the film uh sometime after titli had released in india i started thinking ki kya karna hai what what do i want to do next what am i feeling strongly about and uh, the moment i started looking back and and figured that there was this idea of sexual repression <clears throat> which had troubled me <clears throat> and which i had realized that not a lot of people talk about in india uh there's not a lot of conversation around it so the moment that happened there was a little bit of trepidation already and i would say to a certain extent there was some self censoring which i realized as i went on the journey uh, i didn't know that i was self censoring when i started off on the journey um so yeah so i started writing the film and after about a year of writing the film i realized i i was in a i was in a workshop uh, uh in italy at the three rivers residency and i was meant being mentored by molly molly stensgard who edits for las vontria and she actually sat down with me and said uh, uh why are you making this film and i said but i want to do a piece on sexual repression and sexuality in india and so then she looked at me for a long while and then she said but then why are you not doing it so that's when i realized that oh you know i was probably a little scared not just you know uh, from the outside and then of course then there were the the, the usual issues of paisa kahan se milega funding kaise aayegi so that took a while actually that i mean my script was done in about a year and a half and i had got the cinema dumon uh, which is about 40% of the funding that i needed to make the film and it took me another two and a half years after i got cnc to be able to raise the money in india so that was a long journey by itself that took a lot of juice out of me but uh, but yeah eventually we ended up shooting the film in 2019 uh, june and july of 2019 and then just as we were editing uh not i mean we were somewhere in the middle of our edit and then we got hit with by the pandemic and everything shut down and then the whole scape changed i think everybody was trying to get their bearings i lost my father uh uh in in 2021 and so yeah so the edit took a bit of time because it's a really fragile film uh it has a very difficult character at the center of it so yeah everything put together you know just just it it just became a journey okay i don't know uh, how many people have watched uh, titli his uh, first film uh that also you know dealt dealt with uh, 
it was a difficult film actually not an easy watch and it explored some areas like you know very private uh, dark areas of mind and patriarchy uh, there is a family at the core of the plot uh, do you find i mean i am not saying it's a it's i cannot say it's a continuation of the theme because uh, here it is yes, on face you are addressing something very different but at the same time being someone from delhi maybe uh, you are placing it in a delhi uh, surroundings uh, it very difficult uh, thank you for you know letting me have a glimpse of the film uh, your new film agra so it's a it's a very daring film and it's very difficult watching so after finished watching i realized how difficult it must have been to write and you know make it into uh, visualize on screen i mean capture it on screen that should have been a something really something for you so uh, as i said in india we you know most of the things we love to hide under the carpet anything related to sexuality is strictly a taboo here so and your film goes to the other end you know it uh, tries to take it on you know bluntly so uh, is there any any prototype was there any prototype in your mind when you were uh, writing guru for this film uh, because we never accept that you know we all have we all go through these uh, stages of at some stage to some level everyone goes to this uh, fragile uh, physicality and physically and mentally we all go through and there are you know suppressed sexuality suppression emotionally and sexually are there at our own stages which we may not be you know willing to admit so was there any prototype for you uh, for this character guru and the plot you placed him so uh, by 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 prototype i'm assuming you don't mean like a reference for the film but yeah. where does it come from yeah, yeah so <clears throat> yeah i mean uh, a large part of guru is me at a at a certain age uh, you know from when i was about 16 17 years old till maybe even 25 26 i had felt a certain sexual repression within myself and an inability to talk to uh, the opposite sex or to be able to articulate what i was feeling and to be able to express it in a healthy sort of way i found it really difficult coming from a, coming from a, 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 a you know socio cultural background where, where, which you see uh, in large swaths of uh, north india it's it's very common and so the the seed feeling for the film began really from what i had felt but then uh i also knew that the film could not remain strictly personal if it if it had to have any chance of becoming a significant piece about sexuality from what i had felt personally it needed to somehow become much more universal uh and uh and this time period that i'm talking about uh, while i was in delhi as a young boy maturing into a man uh, i had seen many other boys around me go through the same thing and you know to uh, 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 probably much more dialed up than what i was feeling it had gone to a such such an extent where it was almost being bracketed as a certain madness uh within them and i somehow felt like that was not the whole truth and i felt like this story needed to encompass not just my own feeling but all of these people put together and one of the uh key problems that i faced when i was trying to discover what is the central impulse you you you're saying what is the prototype i'm going to call the prototype the central impulse what is the central impulse and what is the sort of the tonal textural thing that i'm looking for <clears throat> and you know when i started uh, thinking about that i realized that this problem was a very very big problem that i 
I did not fully understand sexual repression to the extent that I was thinking about exploring it because all said and done, I was slightly more privileged. I came from a lower middle class, middle class, bol lije. I lived in East Delhi, which is not a very, very, uh, 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 I grew up in East Delhi, which is not a very fancy area of the city. It's, a, yeah, it, it's, it's like, it's called Jamna Par, which is, you know, it's, uh, it came on, it, it's the extension of the city that came much later. However, I did live in a three bedroom house uh, and I had a room to myself. However, I did have parents who kept a close watch on me and, and, and it was difficult to express myself, but I realized that other boys, other men that I'd seen around me had gone through even tougher uh, circumstances. And uh, I had somehow managed to scrape through sane through, through those years. And, and uh, I knew that most of the other people had not managed to escape the way I had. So now I had this problem in front of me ki agar is film ka such insanity hai in some form of insanity that you feel or let's call it some form of chaos or some some form of noise that you start feeling in your head how do i latch on to that how do i truly first feel myself what that noise is what that chaos is before attempting to write it because if i just from the outside start writing it then it might just fall flat and it might be dishonest so i had to after a point stop writing and figure out a way for myself to be in situations where I could dial up the sexual repression and the play of where it leads you for myself. So I'll give you a small example. I spent about six months in sex chat rooms myself, oh, okay. sometimes posing as uh, uh, a, a random boy, sometimes posing as women, talking to boys and sometimes being myself. So I also made it a point that I need to be there, even in the virtual world, I need to be there myself sometimes to be able to see what am I feeling. And uh, after, and and there, there, there was several other things that I did, uh, 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 trying to maintain a, a, a sane uh, 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 process while doing it, keep myself safe and keep, other people other people safe but i had to i had to almost act out and play it out for myself to see ki what are you feeling what what do you feel when when something like this happens and at some point i felt just pure noise and pure chaos and something interesting revealed itself for me which was that we i think we all have three very uh, significant selves we have our uh, 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 you know, we have our public self, which is here now with all of you. We have our private self, which is with the people that we know intimately. And then we have our secret self. And these three selves are always in negotiation with each other. And they help each other survive. But when you start to play out desire to that level and sexuality to that level, I found a very interesting thing that was happening was that your private self starts dissolving or the need for the existence for the private self starts dissolving. And it's only these two creatures that are left which is the secret life and the public life. So you, you mold your public life only enough to be able to feed the secret life and the secret life starts end up, uh, starts to in turn feed it uh, on, on your public life. And the moment that sort of started happening, and I started sensing that noise and what it was doing to me. I knew then that I had the textural, the tonal play for what this boy, what the central character was feeling. And that's where then the true sort of prototype for the, for the film started emerging from there. And with that, the idea of, uh, 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 you know, the physical spaces that we inhabit. I thought that was a very interesting lens to take on the film because no one had really, in a country like ours with 1.3 billion people, uh, crushed into such small spaces, uh, you know, it's almost like we are a can of sardines, but no one had really looked at sexuality through that lens. And the, the, and the, the kind of transactionality 
this fight for spaces leads to so all of these elements started you know then coming together this this uh, the noise that he's feeling the transactionality in relationships uh, uh the fight for space and and the films slowly started emerging from there by itself and and my effort always is to always when i'm writing something to put myself in a place where the film starts talking to me by itself and i am not the one who's sitting and writing the film yeah that's a quite interesting angle i i also that like you know the way the physical space is affecting you as you said you know a typical indian family how it struggles with you know there is no virtually no private space everybody is family is parents you know uh, adolescent boys and girls everybody is crammed in their room and you know their privacy they are always under the watch i mean either patriarchal or any kind all kinds of watch there all the time under so uh, that also because that forms an interesting part of the film also later it goes into a and the track and you know this uh, struggle for housing the i mean uh, especially this indians fight it becomes an intense open physical violent fight for uh, clutching on to one's own space physical space so that also is there yeah that's true uh, also this uh, existence of uh, family uh, here also family is there though it's fragile you know, totally scattered like uh, some the upper area is occupied by one portion of the family and titli also had the family in its uh, center space but uh, in a totally in a different way isn't it like because yeah. uh, we cannot call it a continuum like you know that yeah yeah, yeah yeah absolutely i think titli for me was my piece about family and and circularity and how images travel from one person to the other person uh within a family and what the interesting thing that i discovered was that there's actually a uh generational sort of skip they, how and if you read more of uh, rd lang's work uh, you know which was almost became like a bible for titli uh, uh without knowing actually i had written the script and then later i spoke to i i was uh, i was uh I always try to share my work with a few people that that I trust and and so I had given the script to Kamal Swaroop uh, sir and I had said ki ye maine likha hai aap please padho aur batao react karo kya what do you feel about this and uh, he said he told me he said tune rd lang padha hai kya so i said no i i haven't who is this and so he just smiled and he said read this book so i got the book and i read it and i discovered that something that i had thought i thought i had a new thought or i had some you know bumped it and i couldn't fully articulate it for myself even then it was only after reading politics of the family that uh you know it the the idea of what i had been trying to do all this while for the last year and a half emerged for me very clearly and that sort of invo- informed the shooting process of the film so so titli was more my piece on family and circularity and and these images that transform transfer from generation to generation but uh, agra even though there is a family and you see a family but for me uh, they are all single units they are they're not never really a family that they they're, they call themselves a family but they are also obsessed with their own individual desire in its in all its forms from lust to uh, you know the 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 transactional aspects of desire and wanting things out of uh, uh, out of other things that they are all singular units you can't really call them family so so yeah uh, I, in that sense i think uh, the the gaze on the characters uh, as that unit is is slightly different in agra than it is in titli also we find that uh... you did uh, titli then uh, you after this you made this film agra in between you made the film binu ka sapna which was screened here uh, was it uh, did it happen in between the shoot of this film agra or like and also there is another film you already working on or it is completed so is it happening at the simultaneously or like 
Yeah, so Binu happened before Agra. Binu happened, I think I shot it in 2017. Uh, yeah, so Binu just happened between while I was writing Agra. I think I had already written, uh, I had a pretty advanced draft of Agra by then and, and I had the CNC and I was looking for the Indian funding. And uh, in between, I just met uh, these lovely uh, producers from TTT, Terribly Tiny Talkies, and they were huge admirers of Titli and they said, we we need to do something together. So the idea just emerged from there. You know, it was it was a very uh, unexpected thing in that sense. So we just met a couple of times and we said, let's do something. And then, uh, uh, and then I wrote the first draft of Binu and then suddenly we realized that it the budget that was being proposed was, we wouldn't be able to, pull off Binu in that then we had to find another producer and it became a slightly bigger film it was intended as a 20 minute film but it ended up as a 32 minute film we shot for some seven eight days so it became a beast by itself but uh, but yeah so Binu happened between Titli and Agra and uh, yeah so I've just finished uh, Dispatch which is the third feature uh, after Agra just finished uh, Sound Mix before coming here for that so so yeah that's that's on the way so uh, is binuta supply in some way you know uh, connected to uh, uh, anyway agra you already had a uh, completed almost complete script with you uh, while writing binuta supply where do you place binuta supply is it its quotes are more connected to titli or agra it's hard for me to say i i wouldn't know i for me all i can say is that it's my piece on anger and and violence. So I, I always try to go with uh, some sort of central emotion for anything that I'm doing. So for me, Binu was my say that I wanted to have on Agra, uh, on, on anger and on, on, on this sort of unabated violence that we see around ourselves. In that sense, as I said, uh, so for me, they are, they are three totally different pieces, but... Uh, Perhaps one could connect it. I, if if were if one were wanting to connect it, maybe it's a maybe it's a conversation that Titli and Agra are having amongst themselves. Purely, I think, in terms of craft, in terms of how the film is uh, is uh, is told, uh, Binu. Maybe some of what I did in Binu. Uh, informs uh, some of what I tried to do in Agra. Just, just purely, I think, in terms of craft. Anyone wants to ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so... I mean, when we, I mean, it was the most obvious choice for us because when me and Sid, uh, Siddharth, Siddharth Devan, the DP, we, we sat down and we started talking about how we wanted to shoot this film. The first conversation was all uh, obviously the aspect ratio and, uh, and again, we knew that we were dealing with a very, very, uh, problematic character who who is sort of on the margin of misinterpretation in many ways and and we were a little worried that uh, the film should not cross the line and and should not feel like it is endorsing uh, in any manner what he's doing and we felt like he was so myopic uh, in in his gaze towards the world it was almost like he had blinkers on. He could not see, Binu could not see anything outside of his immediate vision uh, or what his worldview had become uh, after being informed by his own uh, small sample of experiences. And the moment we started discussing that idea of blinkers, we just felt like the whites need to be cut out. It, it needs to be one is to one and it needs to be really cramped for you to be able to subliminally feel that it's a very blinkered vision of reality and it is not being endorsed as the full reality.
Sorry, come again. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the freeze frames are have a have a are a, are a device that are that are used in a similar way because um, it's not a wholesome experience for Binu. Uh, it's almost like he's cherry picking reality for himself. You know, there are these moments that he uh, focuses on, and he uh, blows up those moments in his head. And he just uh, writes his own story through the voiceover that you hear. And he writes his own story on those cherry pick moments. So uh, freezing those images and, and letting you feel what, what he's ingesting, uh, the bile that he's ingesting in those moments was some of the impetus behind, behind having those, uh, those freeze frames. Can you bill, since you are an uncommon talent, I am asking you a generic question. Do you endorse the view that, as Sigmund Freud said, all art is the expression of our repressed libido? Or, uh, do you endorse that view? Then you mentioned about virtual chat rooms. As the global trend is that of a marriage phobia surging, do you think your grand grandchild will be wedding an algorithm instead of a human being? Because we are now enamored by pixelated beings, virtual beings. So, uh, as you are also the virtual chat room, so I am asking this question: your, uh, Do you think that your grand grandchild will be wedding a code or algorithm? Uh, what was the first question that you had? Uh, Sigmund Freud said that it is the chalization of our repressed libido. Your films deal with that. Right. Okay. And uh, also, you do you think that all documentary writers have only blinked visions? They are cherry picking. Very blinked spaces. Okay. Is all artistic repression repressed libido? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a question that it's a long debate, actually. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not something that is easy to answer in a few words. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, opening out several things for me so i don't know how to answer this i would say to 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 say it in a in a in a in a compressed manner i would say yes and no uh, yes because uh, uh, it is something that you have to explore as an artist uh, 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 but i feel like there is a point in your work or you can arrive at a point in your work where you can look inwards enough to be able to uh, uh, put away your own libidinal uh, impulses and uh, be able to work uh, outside of them. So th you can reach that point at some point. Um, almost all sociologists have attacked Freud on the lens that he confined the entire human life to the bedroom. That is the only limitation they see. In but Freud? Freud limited. Yeah, they see that Freud was limited. Uh, Freud was confining the whole entire life to the bedroom. Well, you know, there's, there's, there's a reason that uh, Freud is still uh, relevant today. Freud uh, or Jung or, or, you know, many of their successors. There's a reason that they're valid, which is that they tried to explore an area of... of, of human lives which is uh, the most personal uh, it when when you're in the bedroom and when you're in union with someone so intimately there are so many truths that spill out <laughs> within those moments 
at the rate of seconds at the rate of milliseconds uh, there are so many true moments that you experience uh, that a lot of truth bombs can can drop on you so i don't think i don't quite agree with because it was woody allen who said brain is my second favorite organ right that is understood yeah then my second question regarding virtual chat rooms you are engaged in what about the future of virtual it's not the future it's here already people it's are already, people already yeah it's a, here already people in japan are already marrying digital uh, 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 entities and choosing to spend their 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 lives with them so i don't think it's in the future we are we are already dealing with it okay also you were mentioning that you know uh, the gestation period apart from the writing reasons uh, funding also was a, one of the reasons for taking this much time so it's very strange you know when we were promised that you know the great day when the otts are here the digital technology is here so so many platforms are open to the new kind of cinema new kind of film making of course the art film making always found you know difficult ways but then uh, there was a government funding was there nfdc or state governments were there so that arise almost we as we all know that's no more it's not existing but the private funding also uh, still a problem for a filmmaker like you who has already went to a film festival and you know prove that so that means uh, uh, things are not that rosy for filmmakers like you still with regards to funding yeah i think that but that doesn't uh, apply just to me that i know, yeah, of course i know many filmmakers right now in bombay and and uh, across our country actually who are dealing with the same issues as and and you know as far as private funding is concerned we have to know that whoever funds your film at the end of the day is looking for a viable source to be able to recover that money uh uh from from whichever from whichever platform or whichever source even if they are not looking to make a profit they actually want a some sort of return on their basic investment the the major problem that has happened now with the uh, with a certain kind of content is that even private funders who might be willing to back independent stuff are not that sure where they are going to get their basic investment out of how does it come back so which has become the bigger problem which is leading to you know a certain homogenization of the kind of content we are seeing and 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 the state of what we are seeing on ott platforms i mean this question this this discussion even happened in yesterday's panel with the uh, shirley and uh, and uh, shonak and and savnik uh, yeah so it's the same thing one doesn't know as uh, shelly uh, as uh, shirley said yesterday one does know if if ott uh, platforms uh, are uh, facilitating your your films or whether films go go there to die and i found that quite quite pertinent actually so sir another question regarding csr funding what on uh, gathers is that airline airlines has already funded for a holy uh, bollywood film is there any scope for such uh, uh, csr corporate social responsibility funding <laughs> so first of all reliance getting into cinema is not csr at all they even they don't look at it as csr it's a business it's a valid business for them they have an uh, they have a media interest they have an interest in controlling uh a uh, 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 media in in a in a certain manner and that's what they are trying to do so they are running a business it's not csr it's a production company even no? it's not csr at all okay okay uh, hi sir so you began the conversation by mentioning self censorship okay so the self censorship censorship or censoring comes from a society where many things uh, talking about many things is a taboo and when we self censor it is not we are being we are not being true to our art or the story which we are trying to say so you mentioned somebody like you had some help from you know somebody influenced you to come out of that shell of self censoring and to uh, convey what you have in your mind 
So as an artist, as a person who have come out of that shell, what do you have to say to the coming artist or filmmakers about uh, being true to the story or what they have in mind, their mind and to be open about every topic they need to talk about? See, about that, I would say only one thing, which is that uh, whatever you're trying to make from whichever place you're trying to make it, uh, at the end of the day, the journey is a solitary journey. You might meet some people along the way who might end up helping you give some sort of push to a direction. But whether you find yourself in that moment meeting that person or not, is totally dependent on your basic courage. So uh, I think the only thing that I would say to young filmmakers who are thinking of um, doing something which pushes the envelope, which has not been done before, is to have courage. Um, and have courage not only in the... Uh, brightest moments have courage in your most darkest moments and have courage in your lows and uh, in fact you know it's 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 not something that is true only for independent filmmakers i think any filmmaker worth their salt whatever kind of film they're they're making uh having courage is one of the prerequisites <laughs> before you dive in to having a filmmaker's life so yeah so i think uh, i think for 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 your question i would then correct myself a little bit and i would say more than courage for an independent filmmaker uh, more important is their honesty with themselves i think it's much more important to be honest to yourself and say मैं जो कर रहा हूँ या मैं जो कर रही हूँ वो क्यों कर रहा हूँ और क्यों कर रही हूँ एंड वॉट इज़ द काइंड ऑफ कॉन्वर्सेशन दैट आई वॉन्ट टू एंगेज इन विद माई सेल्फ विद अदर्स लेटर बिकॉज अदर्स विल कम ऑन दिस जर्नी एट अ मच मच लेटर पॉइंट बट फर्स्ट डू आई हैव द स्टेमिना एंड द वेर विदल टू बी कंटिन्यूसली एवरी मॉर्निंग वेक अप स्टेर इन द मिर एंड बी फुली ऑनेस्ट विद माई सेल्फ एंड keep have the energy to keep on uh removing all the curtains one by one and one by one and one by one and not stop till you feel like you've seen what is at the end of the or uh, at the end of the passage and uh, one thing i wanted to ask you like uh, for a Uh, for both the films or both three of the films the role of the actors is very important like you know their conviction where they on board i mean how you got them convinced into doing the roles was there a, you know, there could be is not an easy job to uh, enact those roles so how do how do you find your actors in uh, generally or there is is there a process behind that like you not know, just audition i'm asking yeah there is a there is a process which <clears throat> i've developed over the years uh, but these are actually two separate questions and i don't want to go on a long winded reply on this one because yeah, i don't know how much time we have left but um yeah of course for a film like this i think without going into each journey because i the journey of getting so there were seven principal characters on agra seven very important Uh, cogs uh, primary characters and the journey of getting each one of them on the film is an interesting journey by itself but i would compress it and say that uh, the most important thing when you're doing a film like this is to have their trust fully uh, for them to be able to trust you and know that when you're going to deal with something like sexuality you are not going to uh you're not going to sensationalize it and and the best way to do it is remind yourselves and remind the actors that the film is not about sex it's actually about what the people are feeling what the characters are feeling and it's it's essentially about a young man's rebellion against 
the deep transactionality that he sees in relationships so the moment you remove the artificial lens of sex or sexuality ki are isme sex hoga to wo apne aap hi easier ho jata hai because an actor can come and connect with the material as a human being rather than look at it as just you know a film that deals with sex because our sexual lives also tell us only about what we are feeling so so i think to gain their trust was was uh, easy in some of the seven cases in in some cases it it was difficult but i think once you have the actors then the for me personally the really difficult uh, part of the process starts because i usually do about 3 month long, long workshops for for my films and uh, usually the process that i follow is that for the first 2 months there are three actors that are playing each part so i only decide who i'm going to cast in the final month of the workshop and so to function within bollywood or to function in bombay with some of the actors egos is really difficult because i think actors the conventional actors or the normal actors that we have in bombay or in india any anywhere in india are are are, are hardly actors they are they are more brands first and they think of themselves as brands so there's a huge ego associated with what they feel is an audition so forget doing one audition for one day you're doing a two month audition so so they that is a bring in uh, people with uh, sorry uh bringing people with theater backgrounds or like fresh faces um no so so, uh, so yes, there's Mar- there's Mar- rahul roy yeah, who, who's there. who's there there's priyanka bose uh so while priyanka without taking names while priyanka was uh, workshopping for for the film there were two other very well known actors who were who were going through the workshop process and we were so i always insist with my actors that this is not about commenting on your acting ability or your prowess as an actor the only reason you are here at the beginning of the process is that wo to aap bahar hi rakh do na that you are a good actor it's now about figuring whether we can find this part and who is able to come come arrive closest to that part so anyway so that's one difficult part of the process that you and and it's not something that i like to do because oh mujhe teen options chahiye nahi you for me it's also it's also a way to because you're going to put them in the same house they are going to have histories they are going to be a family you're seeing who is who is functioning well with who your your you know sort of accessing various aspects of their personality you're trying to judge what family out of this comes together in the best way where without having to uh, uh uh speak dialogue about where they come from you can straight away feel the history between them and so you 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 already have a lot of unspoken history within within that uh, within the film present within the film so so that's a difficult part and then to be able to uh skin off the other parts from actors so usually again very quickly how i divide my workshop is uh month 1 is basically shedding shedding all the other characters that you played because a huge problem with actors is that they're doing so much work they come and they're doing your film but they're still doing some other part so um so the first month for me is just shedding uh the second month is being the zero state where you're neutral and then the last month is when you when you start putting on the skin of the character that you're going to play in this film that 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 we are dealing with so yeah just very broadly that's that sort of the scope of how actors are prepped and then there are many other aspects to it which yeah I, uh could you maybe talk a bit about the exercises you do at these workshops what what do you put them through what do you you know i'm already very notorious for uh, uh, you know uh doing unacceptable stuff with people so i'd rather not speak about <laughs> some of what i do because it's just you know there's i don't know there's there's just uh uh zabardasti mein there's a faltu ka mythicism that is built around people uh 
you know specifically it, it's difficult also i mean jokes apart it's difficult also to answer your question because the exercises are not planned exercises it's something that is being developed uh, and that's why you need a three month period for this sort of a way of working with actors because you are also it's it's like you're performing with them because you're trying to sense what they're feeling and within with an actor that you have in front of them you're at the end of every day sitting down with your workshop director and saying okay tomorrow we feel he needs this or in the next three or four days we need to break this barrier we need to break this door uh either thoda held back hai okay so what do what do we do to open this door what do we do to make her understand that this is not about the body this is about the spirit so uh yeah again i will not talk about specifically what what, what all exercises needs need need to be done but but it's a it's a very uh, tactile thing you're you're trying to have enough trust of the actor build the trust to a point where they reveal themselves as people let's say in the first month as human beings because pehle mahine mein to aap shedding kar rahe ho so when you start shedding not only do the characters start coming off but you also start to experience a lot of the human being because you reach a certain stage of fragility at that point actors become really fragile uh because things that they had forgotten they are suppressing start bubbling up and it's a slightly abrasive process for some people it can be abrasive because it's putting them into difficult spots and sometimes they can go through the workshop by itself but the hours when they are at home are very very difficult and so when they come back in the morning they almost blame you for being put through the torture of of what happened when they went back from the workshop and so once that starts bubbling up in week 3 or week 4 then the next month starts you know is is really about uh collating what all has bubbled up and letting it settle down uh, to be able to by the end of week 7 week 8 be able to achieve the neutral stage so that you are a little settled to be now able to take on the task of building another character i i don't know if i answered your question but any further question uh, good afternoon sir Uh, so I would love to know how we are uh, still with the uh, the burger servers through his films like Oi Lucky Lucky Way and others how my scene was with him oh uh, you are still i mean you you had your experience uh, as a like a director assistant with him yeah. so would love to know about that yeah i mean uh, in many ways he was a mentor for me uh, uh, i those years were absolutely invaluable for me because i i think the biggest thing that i learned was uh the sheer work ethic uh the amount of hard work uh uh and the 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 impulse to want to in a very structural way reach to the end of um the thought that you began with so i discovered that if you are beginning with a thought and you want to take it somewhere there is a structural way there is a method to be able to do it and a lot of uh, a lot of pursuing that method requires some sort of discipline and hard work it's not just a you know before that i probably thought uh main bahut creative hu aur mujhe ideas aa jate hain aur filme aa jati hain aur film likhi jayegi but i was i was not not uh privy to how to bell that cat i didn't know okay how do i do it again and again and again and again so seeing uh the importance of structure 
the importance of being able to structurally battle problems uh, on a film set while writing and of course i've developed my own methods but the need for that structure and the uh, the yeah so i think the most important thing that i learned was that if you want to be consistent and if you want to do it film after film after film then you need to uh, have a structure and figure it out for yourself does that answer your question yeah i think okay there is um, you said that you take 3 month um, with uh, acting session so has that happened that after 3 month any actor or actress still doesn't fit does that happen all the time so then what do we do <laughs> uh so the i mean again i the, without uh, naming anyone no, then, no names no then, required not required then what you do is like on on something that me and the siddharth were working together on siddharth devan we i remember us like going back home after shooting in the evening really disheartened and having this conversation and me saying to siddharth ki nahi ho raha abhi kya kare iska kya kare and he was like mujhe bhi nahi samajh mein aa raha yaar abhi kya kare so then i just looked out the window lost for 5 minutes and then i turned to him and i said isko piche se shoot kare kya thoda okay <laughs> so i guess that's that's the only way to do it then just take the camera piche aur piche se kuch okay but they are retained yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. once you made the commitment then ek baar maine commitment kar li to phir main to apni bhi nahi sunta Uh, so the crew members also go through these three month. Uh, they are also part of this workshop, or it's just the actors? No, it's primary. It's a very interesting question. It's primarily the actors, but the okay. crew uh, visits the workshop on on days that uh, 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 you know that uh, we pick. Uh, so there'll be, and usually it can't happen early on. So it's towards because the crew has a lot of work that they're doing. by themselves within those 3 months because that 3 months is like the prep for the whole film uh but they do come in like spend uh two or three whole days maybe in let's say week 6 week uh, uh uh 10 week 12 uh normally i mean it has to be there in the last week because they are seeing some improvs being performed and they are also like your dp your production designer your costume designer is getting a sense of the uh performance texture of the film and that's informing some of their decisions into what uh, how they how they're sort of picking making their choices in their department so you know that first happens around week 7 where you still have half the workshop to go okay. and you can see early on ki acha ye ho raha aisa kuch develop ho raha hai and yeah I think it's uh, time for us to wind up. Uh, thank you to all who ended the session with their you know, sensible questions. Uh, we would like to present you with a moment of our gratitude from the academy. Uh, thank you, Kanu, for again once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.